people waiting so we're just letting everyone in and we're just fiddling about because we're recording the meeting as well for those who can't make it if they have siblings etc so we're just sorting it out but we've got the powerpoint ready to go so we're just going to share our screen and um, william cohen's mum can you do me a favor and just unmute yourself and tell me to see the powerpoint please yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank Good. you. Thank you for being our guinea pig. <laughs> so I'll just start the slideshow now. So welcome to you to everyone. We are very excited, aren't we, Mr. Yep. Potsy, to have a brand new class. The children have amazed us already. So just to run and break down everything, we have got in 2C, Ms. Capotsi. Hello. <laughs> and we've got in 2W, Ms. Wargoose. Um, and we also have a student teacher as well called Miss Gardner, who's in 2C, in case any of the children have mentioned her already. And we have Miss. We've got primary, school, uh, primary sports coaching. For art, we have our new art teacher, Mrs. Carhill, as well, who's been wonderful so far. And for music, we have Miss Marsden, who also does PPA cover for. Miss Capozzi yeah, on a Tuesday morning. So routines. Yeah. So the routines for uh, the children now that they are in year two are slightly different. So we have our lunch time from twelve twenty till ten past one. Um, if your child is being collected by anybody other than yourself, please will you let us know either through the school email, which I know everybody's brilliant at. Um, mm -hmm letting us know the night before or the morning of um, or just the office and they'll give, give us the note to say and um, who else is picking up and um, they've already all brought in everything that they need it's just a reminder that they need a water bottle and um, a lunch unless they're having school dinner their reading book every day and their spelling book every day which we will give on Friday with a new list of spellings um, and then um, copies of their logins for uh, my maths and spag Dot com just in case they've forgotten so we'll stick them in their spelling books so that they um, are nice and safe and um, if there are any new scribe medications anything over the summer that's popped up please can these be taken to the office because there are forms that need to be um, filled out um, Miss Thompson then needs to um, add the children onto our system so anything that that has to go through the office first um, this half term we will be doing PE on a Friday, so the children can come in in their PE kits ready. And swimming will be on Wednesday and Thursday. And um, they should wear their PE kit on these days and obviously bring their swimming costumes and everything they need on um, Wednesday, Thursday. No, that will be starting soon. That will be starting, yeah, exciting. next week. Very exciting. So our school values, I'm sure a lot of you already know them already if you've had siblings throughout the school, but we just want to remind them for everyone else. So our core values of respect underpin everything we do at Ashdeen, and that's across staff and children alike. So we've got resilience, excellence, self-awareness, positivity, empathy, communication and teamwork. What does this look like, though, in year two? So celebrating our values. Again, this happened when they were in year one in reception, but every Monday we celebrate the children who have shown one of our school values for each, from each class. So every Monday we meet as a key stage, including EYFS, and each teacher explains why this child deserves this award for, fo for following or celebrating one of their values. And they will get her, they will be sent home with a certificate. But it's just to let you know as well that we do monitor who gets home certificates, so don't worry your child won't be missed off our list as well but sometimes we do give them more than once if they have really dosages as well um so our new school motto is excellence everyone everywhere every day say that with me miss kapoxi yeah. everyone, everyone everywhere, everywhere every day. day and again that is not just for the children it's for staff as well that includes their in their learning in their behavior the presentation their attendance mm -hmm. and even things they do outside of school so even at trips and residentials which we are really excited about next year as well yeah. for year two okay um attendance oh oh is there a question 
Um, hi, it, it, it's Reba's mum here. I think the slide for me is still stuck on the first uh, first slide, which says welcome to year two. Oh, um, does anyone else have that problem as well? Yeah, it's yes. the same for me. Oh, oh you're joking. <laughs> right, hang on. <laughs> oh, no. Let's try. How Stop sharing. <laughs> we'll try again. Thank oh, you for letting us thank know. Thank you. Thank you. There's thinking that we would share. I thought we were on a roll, Miss Capozzi. I thought we had finally sorted it out. Thank you for letting us know, though. Okay, can you see this slide? I can see it's on slide eight. Great. Perfect. So maybe it's when it's. Let's do it like that, shall okay. we? Let's do it like that. Uh, sorry, it's, um, sorry, I can see it now. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's working now. Perfect. Yay! <laughs> okay, so um, attendance, this covers our excellence, self-awareness, positivity and teamwork. Um, children come through the classroom doors between a uh, quarter to and 8.55. Um, either door, our classroom or the main mm. one is fine um, into the cloakroom. If they are late, they should enter through the school office with an adult to sign them in. We, get, we dismiss at 3.20 from our classroom doors, which you already know, you've all come and picked up and dropped off which is great and um, this is just some um, extra information for you so regular and punctual attendance in school is essential when a child misses school this disrupts their learning last year at the end of year two of those whose attendance of 95 percent and higher 79 achieved the expected standard in reading and writing so there's a clear link between children who um, are in school and do well academically and achieve. So of those with a less than 95% attendance, only 65% achieve the expected standard in reading and writing. So there is a big difference. And obviously we are all very aware of what's happened the past couple of years mm -hmm. in attendance and that played a big part in it. So this year we would really love to see them in all the time. And I'm sure they want, you know, they want to be in, which is great too. So um Alongside that is uniform and the school uniform policy can be found on our school website. We actually did get a, a comment, didn't we, that all of our children in year two came in and they oh, were yeah, all, we did. you know, the perfect, the uniform, everything that they had. So that is a massive thank you to you um, at home for making sure that they are. It's just keeping that consistent. So high expectations on presentations, so shirts tucked in, those things. Um, and PE kits on the allocated days. This is another little side note. If children cannot meet uniform expectations, so they've grown out of school shoes, please let us know by email um, and by when and when it will be resolved. Um, if children are wearing incorrect uniform or PE kit, parents will be contacted and children can be sent home. If families are struggling with the purchase of uniform, please contact school. So we're we're pushing as a whole school and as us and staff about the importance of how um, you know our presentation and and being ready to learn and having everything that we need um, and the, I mean the children have been fantastic they these are. past few days you know the last two days and they're switched on and they're ready and um, it does make a difference so it's just here if there is anything you know lost the jumper yeah. or school shoes too small just send us an email so that we we know beforehand otherwise if they come in with something missing um we will contact you here we go this is still me uh, <laughs> so classroom rules were rules rewards and behavior um, we have introduced the three R's this year, so ready, respectful and responsible. And yesterday we talked about what they mean and what they look like as well. The children put, sorry. That's okay. I thought I'll show this That's one. okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, and what it looks like as well. So for the three R's, ready, respectful and responsible, as both classes, we discuss what that looks like to them, not just when they're learning, when they're moving around school, when they're being a part of the community as well. And how they link. So these are ways of the children earning their merits um, by following the three R's um, and we refer to them throughout the day. And, you know, they we say, you know, show us 
show me that you're ready and they have already started mm. so you know they they see the message and they are applying it already which is fantastic and um, there's also as Miss Wagu said celebration assembly um, celebrates the children's work and their attitudes so class rules rewards and behavior so again, like the three R's that Ms. Capozzi was just on about before, these posters that you see now are displayed in the classroom and they reflect the three R's. So it's such as we were saying before, walking in the corridors, every child across school from reception all the way to year six need to walk in silence unless they're talking to an adult, keep to the left and walk in single file. That is to keep them safe. It's to make sure that they're keeping respectful of others learning. So for instance, we finish earlier for lunch since those in key stage two so we need to make sure that they're quiet so they don't disturb others as well and to be ready for learning again Ms. Capozzi has touched on this about uniform and arriving on time but having the correct equipment science in the corridors and putting your things away quickly but safely as well we don't want them running ragged around the classroom and greet your teacher at the door which they have been amazing at, I think already in the first few days you know sometimes you get children that are quite shy but I feel that both of our classes have been lovely at doing that they've got great manners and to greet your classmates as well they're all great at doing that mm -hmm. already and to start your task on time as well so these are displayed on the class around the classroom and we do remind the children of these but also they can see them they're visible to them so they know their expectations as well so rewards and behaviour, as you know, we do use Class Dojo to reward merit and the merit shop at the end of each half term, half term is still happening this year. Some children have come up with lots of merits that they've saved up, which yeah. I think is quite yeah. nice to yeah. see them being savvy <laughs> about saving up. Um, and consequences formerly known as sanctions. We have a different poster for that with the same sort of sanctions that were before, but we call them consequences because we believe that it's better that children know that if they've done an action, there's a consequence for it rather than a sanction and the consequence for it, maybe 10 minutes off their lunchtime. But as before, they can earn their C1 back as well with good behaviour. And usually they do, don't they, most of the time. And this is to focus on reflection of their own behaviour, restoring their behaviour as well and the resolution. As you can see there, these posters with the W and the C1, C2, C3, C4s, they're all displayed in the classroom. And yesterday, Ms. Capozzi and I, we spoke about that as well and what that looks like. But the children so far have been perfectly behaved and hopefully won't have to use those as much at all this year. Oh, one for me. So, um, curriculum. Um, we have put together for each of you a year two curriculum map for the half term and on it it shows what we're covering in each of the sessions and the lessons how that um is uh, uh, how that links with our um oh gosh our rights of the child rights of the child and um, how it works links with our personal development so this is a big overview for half term one and then each half term you will be sent it and we will change and update it so that it's it's relevant for each half term. This is so that you know what's going on at home as much as we do. I know not all children are come forward with um, everything that they've been doing, mm -hmm. so you can support them. Looking at the different you know genres and things that we're writing in English. If there's anything that the children like to do, you know, any writing at the weekend, you can say, "Oh, we, you've been writing letters. Why don't you write a letter?" So it's all about communication between um, us and you. So hopefully this. This helps with supporting at home. And we've also sent through um, jigsaws for each of the topics. So we do jigsaws for um, science, history, PSHE or jigsaw, um, RE, and these have all should be with you by now. Um, and it shows what the children's specific knowledge that the children will be learning in class, as well as other things around the topic. But these are the the specific pieces of information that we are saying and year two the children will be able to tell you x y and z so mm. um for the great fire of london they will be able to tell you that it happened in 1666 um in london um and it started on pudding lane so it's got specific facts and information that we want the children to be able to retain as retain well. and retrieve and recall and this will go on throughout their time at school mm -hmm. at Ashdeep. Um, 
So for example, sorry, okay. so far we've looked at the year 1666, haven't we, mm -hmm. so far in our history. So if you want to ask them about what maybe the streets look like or what jobs, jobs. they had, mm -hmm. you know, it's so you can see as a parent, maybe to have that discussion, like you said before, of a child going, oh, I did nothing today or, oh, my favourite part was lunch. You can say, well, actually, I know if it's week two in the jigsaw piece two that you learned about the Great Fire of London. Can you tell me more about that? So it has that more conversation to help them retrieve that information as well. Because that discussion does help them to be able to yeah. have it into a long term memory. They can go in the fridge or park. Oh, yeah, in their room. Um, there is a special uh, part at the top here about uh, personal development. So how at Ashton or how specifically in year two, um, we work on the children's personal development. So within the curriculum, we have our weekly rights respecting assemblies. So they look at the rights of the child, how that applies to them in everyday life. And um, we have weekly picture news assemblies, which, you know, um, they got goes out in the newsletter. And then we have um, a year group um, assembly every Friday. Mm -hmm. We elect school council members. We do pupil voice, whether that's by subject leaders or the, the council or um, Mrs. Mather, depending on um, if it's about playground equipment. You know, there's lots of different reasons that we gather the children's pupil voice. We have our Commando Joe sessions, music performances, families, weekly PSHE lessons, which is our jigsaws, and half termly no outsider lessons. So that is just what everybody does. And specific to year two, we have our residential that we go on in half term three. Um, we do zest dance workshops. We do sporting events. We have the lifeboat um, come in and talk about water safety, which is brilliant. We have um, key stage one performances. We have, have um, education on economics. So why do we save? What is um, the difference between want and need? So there's lots of things that are specific to year two, which then build on as as your children go up through the school. So homework. So online homework tasks are set each Friday. As Ms. Capozzi said before, we will give you the logins just a reminder if they've got lost or if they've forgotten. So we have each week we have a weekly maths task, which is usually done through my maths. And then English, which is done through spagbook.com, which is fortnightly. But we usually we we do set, on spag.com, we do set them a paper, don't we? Mm -hmm. That is a sat style sort of paper to get them ready. So then they're familiar with it. So it's not something that's shocking to them come next summer and they sit down for their sats. It's something to get them used to those styles of questions, to work on their spag as well. But we do expect them to practice their spellings every week. I do realise that, you know, family life can be so busy and hectic, but if you could just in the car, just practice their spellings, it's so good for them to see them get a really good score. It really helps them with their confidence. And obviously to read for at least 20 minutes each day. We do check homework. We do monitor who completes it as well. Um, and we do check in with their reading progress, as well as our um, teaching assistants who do help to read with the children as well weekly. Our spelling tests are each Friday, so they'll get sent home with their new spellings on the Friday after their test as well. And you'll be able to see their scores it's in their books. Um, we expect the parents obviously to support us and ensure homework is completed. I do know that sometimes it can be hectic, so do let us know if you're unable to complete it some weeks. You know, we are human, we understand. We just want it to be completed as much as you can because it does support them with their learning. Um, but obviously, we will contact you if we feel that it has been a bit too many times. But I'm sure that won't happen. Um, but yes, just make sure for reading as well that I want to say that um, it's their school books, but also if they want to read for pleasure, let them read for pleasure, read to them as well, because um, children love being read to as well, because they get so much from hearing an adult read, whether it's their expression or their fluency, think, things like that, they do love being read to by an adult. Is this me? Yep. It's me. How to help at home, I've basically already touched on this. But there is help at home documents are available on our class page of the school website if you want to have a look. Um, so repeated practice of fundamentals such as our times tables and reading that, like we just said, it really helps secure the depth of their learning and understanding that becomes more in their long term memory as well. And um, there's loads of resources that you can use, but the children do need to know that they're 
two, five and 10 times tables, but we do practice that in school as well on times table rock stars in our maths lessons. But if you can help at home, that would be amazing. But towards the spring, summer term, we also need to know their divisions of two, five and 10 times tables as well. It says read for 30 minutes each day, but at least 20 at home. Really read the books as well, that's so important. Um, once you've read it once, that's fine, but to get the real comprehension and their fluency, so their understanding of the story, they need to read it more than once, uh, to the point where they can literally whiz through, is perfect. And spellings need to be practiced regularly, and homework is completed. So if you need to refer to anything, it is on our class page on our website as well. But if you do want to know how maybe you could help at home for your individual child and their individual needs, do come and speak to us anytime, and we will help you with that. So you've got this list, but if you feel that maybe your child needs a bit more help with number bonds, for example, or more of their sound, do come and talk to us and we will help you with that. Oh, that's me. It's, it's you. It's, it's reading, but <laughs> um, going back to what Miss Bargu said about being fluent, that we want children to be fluent and love reading and have a passion for reading. Because when, when children can read, they can access everything. So we look at fluency as being pace, expression, notation and reading for meaning. So we read all day, every day at school, um, you know, in our topics, in our English, in our maths, just reading math problems, <clears throat> in science, getting um, information. Excuse me. <clears throat> we read to the children as well. So we have our 20 minutes at the end of the day where we read to the children. They are completely absorbed in books all the time and reading so our key is to get the children to be fluent um, and I know that you know changing of books and things that you know the children are desperate to let's change books and, and get a new book um, but as Miss Wildgoose said it's about reading it a couple of times so that it is so easy that they are literally flying through it and mm. um, that doesn't mean that it's that they can read it and it's uh, you know it's too easy it means that they're fluent which is it which is you know exactly what we want and then we can increase then the length and start looking into um the comprehension part of it by all means you know talk about the book with your children mm. um but fluency is key especially um this year with our sats you know they are given quite large chunks to read and so if they're slow at pace up reading they don't get to the comprehension questions mm. so it's all about you know giving the children the skills that they need to support them um, this one's me too. Um, we're continuing with Go Read this year to log books and reading. So please continue to do that. If we need new logins or we've forgotten, we'll, we'll send them back out again. Um, this should be accessed at home and books added weekly. Children have the opportunity to change their reading books on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Because um, they only got them yesterday. I didn't change mine today, but they definitely no. will on Friday before coming mine home. Mine got them today. Uh, lovely so. so they will definitely be changed on Friday fresh for the weekend and then we will start um reading and assessing with the children as well to make sure that after the six weeks they are at the relevant um reading book level can I just add if you, don't mind. <laughs> if you feel that uh, at the moment that your child's on the same level as they were at the end of year one do not panic because we are assessing them on that and we're going to see if they do if there is any movement that's needed that'll be in the next couple of weeks so if for example your child's been on turquoise and you feel like it's been forever we're going to have a look into that but again it's just that we might just want them to build up that fluency so if they have been on that book band for a long time and you're thinking oh they're still on it again in a few weeks time it's because we just feel that maybe the pace or the fluency needs to be improved so it's only tying loose ends mm -hmm. that's me now mm -hmm. so whole school key um date and year two key date for your diary so i'll run by the whole school ones first so swimming lessons Obviously, the year two is kicking off at the start of hopefully next week, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. Tuesday and um, no, when, Wednesday, no, Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. And then we have our individual photos on the 3rd of October. So make sure they come in looking gorgeous as ever. Parents evening is the 19th and the 20th of October. Hopefully that'll be in person. Hopefully online uh, but we'll see and then we've got the key stage one panto to larry which we're really excited about on the 15th of december 
Um, and we've got the Christmas performance on the 14th of December. So that's a very busy week. Then we've got parents meetings again on the 9th and the 10th of March of next year and the sports day, hopefully, weather posting will be the 26th of May next year. But just for year two, we're very lucky, but just so you know, there will be some dates added hopefully as the year goes on and we'll keep in touch with that uh, with you guys via email. We have a history workshop on the 20th of September. That's very soon. We have music performances for those who take music lessons on the 6th of July next year. Um, we have our residential from the 2nd to the 3rd of March next year and our trip to Quarry Bank Mill, which we loved last year, on the 24th of April. But again, I'll say we will be adding some more dates and we'll contact you via email if there's any changes to any of those at all. And so, last but not least, the communication. So if you would like to speak to us, um, we know that drop off and pick ups are sometimes hectic with siblings or just you know getting off to work so if there is anything that you would like to talk to us about um these are the emails that you need so two c's as uh, two c at ashdeanschool.net and miss wild goose is two w ashdeanschool.net <clears throat> these aren't checked whilst we're teaching and we try and get back to you as soon as we can and um, or grab you on the playground if it's something that you know we we feel is better to talk about um but we check them and we will, will we will respond. That's also the emails to send through um, any if there's a change of pickup or um, anything to do with uniform as well. And that right. is the end of our PowerPoint. And We're back. So now it's just if there's any questions or um, anything anybody would like to ask or know. If you do have a question, if there there's a little hand there should be on more actions there should be a little hand like a hands up so we can see um if you have a question or you can unmute your microphone it's up to you or email us if or there isn't us. and they you think of something you think oh actually i'd like to ask or i'd like to know about that then by all means send us an email grab us at the door yes but I'd like to say on behalf of both of us how proud we are yeah. and amazed we are by the children we have this year. They're fantastic. Their, not only their academic abilities, but their behaviour yeah. and their attitude and how kind they are, yeah, their manners. Great. We're really excited for the year ahead. And be a good one. we've got two gorgeous classes, I think. So, but yes, never fail to drop us an email or grab us at the door in the mornings. And thank you so much for attending. I know you're probably all so busy. Some of you have probably got like three others to attend. <laughs> but thank you so much for choosing to come to us first. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll stay on in case. Yeah, we'll stay on in case anyone wants to chat. But thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you.